What's going on YouTube? Well, this video was a long uh, video in the in the in the wake of making. Um, if you followed my uh, previous video, um, this is part three of the Washer 10 uh, 1063 project. Um, but before I get into it, this, now this video, I've got a lot to cover today because there's been so much between the last video and this one. Um, so it's going to be a little bit different format. Uh, so I'll try to get through it as fast as I can. But before I really actually get into the video itself, uh, I first want to ap truly apologize about the uh, the audio on the last video. I've had this issue. Um, I've noticed that you know I didn't get a lot of views, and I wouldn't either if I'm watching the video and the audio is just crackly and scratching like this one is. Um, I don't know what it is. I have tried to research this. Uh, I don't know what it is that's causing it. Now, when I do my videos, I preview them, uh, and when I transfer them from camera to the laptop, and then uh, before I load them on the YouTube. And uh, the uh, the original video is fine. There's no issues with audio. Uh, when I transfer the files to the to the desktop, uh, there's nothing wrong with the audio. Uh, so apparently whatever it is it's from when it goes when I upload it to YouTube somehow some way I don't know what's going on but it's literally from when it goes from my computer to YouTube something's going on uh, with the audio and to make it do that now it doesn't do it on every video it only does it from time to time you know uh, I so I have no clue so if anybody out there knows what this problem is please put some comments down below um, maybe you've had this issue before with uh, uploading a video on YouTube or whatever. Uh, it just like I said, it just happens every now and then. I so uh, and I tried to Google it. So so I seriously would like to uh, apologize for the audio on the last video. Uh, and it's a good video. I mean, I took it down three times and re-uploaded it three separate times. And no matter what I do. Um, the audio turns out to be the same so I don't know if it if it's getting the files getting corrupt between uploading it from my desktop to YouTube I don't know what it is um, so anyways so I, you know this video uh, hopefully if you're watching this video uh, the audio is good because uh, I really want this uh, this project to go well so anyways let's get on to the uh, actual project of the video now this project is if you watched if you were uh, if you did bear through the audio and watch the, the last uh, part of the video you'll know that what I did was we went ahead and polished the uh, bolt bolt carrier and uh, and the hammer and smoothed it out and we did a video that took it out to the range like I said if you stayed to the end you'll see that I took it out to the range and fired it I think it I think it ended up being like Oh, I think I want to say it's but maybe 200 rounds non-stop through it uh, without any issues uh, so that turned out very well and so now what I've done is moved on to refinishing the stock the wood on this on this washer tin and uh, so now unlike the other video I did do some research on that before uh, I did the, the bolt but this one I really didn't do any research until after the fact uh, but with that being said I actually did you know after I did mine and watched videos and other people doing theirs I came pretty darn close to what the other people did so I'm gonna go through what I'm gonna do is I've got the finished gun right here but I don't want to show that until the end um, so I actually ended up doing the process because this process took probably about a week and a half to do I didn't want to just pause and go, pause and go uh, on the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you exactly what happened, what we did, and then I'll, at the end, show you the final product and what it looks like. It turned out, in my opinion, pretty good. So, first thing you need to do is you need to get your AK, and you need to obviously field strip the wood, the stock, the handguard, the upper and lower handguard off your AK. So, in order to do that, now... I don't have another 
one like it, but I do have my folder if you guys watched the other video. So uh, what I'll do is I'll explain. Obviously, this doesn't have the buttstock, but on the one with the buttstock, what you're going to notice is there's going to be two screws where the buttstock uh, goes into the receiver. And what you'll need to do is when you take off the dust cover, well, well, I'll take this one off, but I don't know. I don't think it's going to be set up the same. Yeah, it's not. But anyways, on the one with the fixed stock, you'll be able to see the stock right in here, they'll be right there, and there's going to be a little gap between the stock and where it screws in. So what you'll do, there'll be a screw, like say, on this side, and then there'll be a screw on this side. Take both those screws out. Take you a screwdriver. Now you'll have to be very careful because this wood, you know, it's that, you know, crappy wood, uh, Romanian uh, wood. Um, so what you'll need to do is you'll take a screwdriver. I've got one right here, and you'll do a little gap. And what you'll need to do is you'll just because it's going to be in there tight. It's going to be in there firm. Um, and you're going to want to slowly but surely wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, and it's going to. You may have to take a hammer to the screwdriver, not the wood. And kind of hit it a little bit and jar it free. It's going to take a, probably a few minutes to get that stock to finally come off. But once you do, you just take it off, and that is it. And then you'll have the back plate. There's two more screws on the back plate. You'll take those two screws out, and then most of them will have a little uh, uh, plate on the side where you can put a sling. You'll take both of those screws out and take that off so then all you'll have now is just the straight wood stock okay and you know obviously set your stuff to the side now to do the upper and the lower hand guards a little bit trickier now to do the upper now I've already went ahead and cheated a little bit here's that lever right here that for the gas tube uh, you know how it's usually hard to get it off if most AK owners know so I went ahead and cheated and loosened it up before I did the video. But what you'll do is you'll flip this all the way up like this. And when you do that, you'll see right here, see when you, when you, when you close it back down, see that little right there, that kind of holds it down. But when you hold it straight up, now you'll be able to take off your gas tube. It takes a little time to get off. Okay. So, well... Maybe I should have uh, took this one off camera before I started the video, but well, I'm not going to give up on it. All right, come on, baby. This one, anyways, I'm sorry. This one I remember the last time. It, it takes a little bit of time to get it off. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm not just going to just uh, tell you about it. What I do with my remote? All right, what would you do with the remote there? Let me, uh, let me go ahead and take this off camera. Let me get it off. It's gonna. What I'm gonna end up having to do is because uh, I remember this one is a little bit harder to get off. What I'll have to do is I'll just have to take a camera, uh, some screwdrivers and stuff, and pry this off. But I don't want to take up all your guys' time. So uh, let me find my remote. My God, I can't find my remote. All right. Well, let me pause this. I'll get this off when I come back. Oh, there it is. Uh, this will be off, and I'll show you the next step. All right, everybody. Well, I'm back. <laughs> Well, we're going to find out here, uh, oh, let me turn my light on real quick, sorry about that. We're going to find out here in a second, if every, anybody was paying attention, uh, and can take a guess real quick of why this upper hand guard would not come off with the gas tube. Here I was, figuring out, man, this thing won't come off. Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, which, you got to take out the, uh, the bolt before you can take it off. So, I started thinking to myself, oh my god, you know, just take it off, you know, but you know what, if I don't, I, if there's some smart gun people out there watching, and which most gun owners are, they were probably going to notice it, so I didn't want to make no excuse, so, yeah, I screwed up. So, let's go ahead and take, a, let's take out the spring and the, uh, and the bolt. Right. I bet you this thing comes off pretty easy this time. Let's see. Look at that. <laughs> wow. All right, so, okay, so now, to get this wood off of here, all right, this wood is on here pretty tight, all right, so what you're going to want to do is you take a look here, there's a flat piece, uh, it's squared, I should say, right here, all right, 
the little ledge. What you're going to want to do, all right, now hopefully you don't have one that's that's been on here, you know, for forever. But some of them will come off easy, some of them won't. Now I've seen other people where they'll take a uh, set of uh, a crescent wrench, grip it, and twist it, and it should come off. But to be on the safe side, if you don't, well, let me rephrase it. What you need to use is, is a vise. But if you don't have a vise, you probably can go ahead and use these. But I highly recommend, it's, it's so much easier to put this in a vise. Obviously, when you clamp down, you're going to want to put something to protect the metal. You don't need a lot. It doesn't have to be in there super tight. So you just get it in there snug. And then what you're going to do is you'll twist. You'll just twist it, and this will come off. And then that will separate. Okay? So then you'll have that off. Now, to take the lower hand guard, it's, it's a little bit easier. All right. Here, right here, take a look right here. There's a little lever, and what you'll do is you'll take a screwdriver and you will pop this up. I mean, I'm not going to do it now, but you'll you'll this right here. You'll just take it, and if you're not if you don't want to mar up your your barrel or your or your wood, what you'll do is you'll take your finger and you use that because it's not that hard. Okay, you'll take your finger and you'll put your screwdriver. Well, see, look at this one just pops. This one comes right up. Okay, that one right there just goes right up. And then what you'll do is you'll take this piece of metal right here and you'll hit it like this. Well, maybe I'll just do it since I've already got it started. We'll see. I haven't taken this one off. Okay, well this one's going to take a little work. But what you're going to do is you'll hit it and this will pop free and then this will just slide right off. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I don't want to start it. Yeah, there we go. So, that's how you take off the wood. All right. Put this on real quick. Put this back in there. There we go. All right. So now, now you've got your wood furniture off your AK. So the next thing you're going to want to do... The next thing you're going to want to do is, regardless if you think it has a finish on it or not, you're going to want to sand it. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take some 400 grit sandpaper, and you're going to sand, and you're going to sand it till it it all it looks just like a piece of wood would a uh, piece of wood would look like, uh, you know, without anything, just a piece of lumber. Once you do that, once you take that all that off. And then what you're going to do, it, it calls for getting uh, some acetone. Now, I didn't have acetone and I didn't use it. But after I did it, like I said, I watched some videos. And mostly everybody who did it used what they call acetone. And they wiped down the wood to reassure that there was no oils from your hand or any kind of grease or of any sort uh, on the wood. And they, just, and they just took a rag and they wiped it all down and let it dry. Okay, I, now when I did mine, I used uh, those rubber gloves that you, you know, you get, uh, you, can, you see doctors wear all the time. So I wouldn't get any fingerprints or anything on the wood at any one time once I started the process. Okay, so I kind of, I didn't have the acetone because I did, like I said, I just did it beforehand. So then, uh, once you sand it all off and you smooth it out, uh, then you can go ahead and uh, start the, the process, the staining process. Now, what kind of stain do you use and what color that is, you know, as far as color is concerned, that is up to you on what, what you're looking for. Okay. Now, for me, I just got what I considered like a, like a walnut, maple color, in between walnut and maple. And uh, so the first thing you do is you grab your, you go buy, you go to the store and you buy your stain. Okay, well, here's the, uh, I guess I should show you. Here's the sandpaper that I use right here. This is the 400, 400 grit sandpaper to, to take anything off. As a matter of fact, this is a piece that I use towards the end. Still going to use it because it's still good. Then you're going to find what kind of stain you're going to use. Now, I went down to my local Home Depot, and now this is wood. Okay, so at first I just thought, well, it's just regular wood. Uh, what can I use? Well, um... So I went down to Home Depot, and I asked the guy down there, 
and uh, he's you know I said well you know you're gonna have a stain then a you know then a varnish you know a clear or something like that or a varnish in the stain and uh, he he recommended a two-in-one and that's what this stuff is this is a two-in-one varnish and stain uh, a polyurethane it's just stain and polyurethane which is a clear and uh, it's a two-in-one so I said oh okay cool so I bought it and I brought it home and I followed the instructions so what you'll do is I got one of these I didn't want to get a bristle brush I got these real cheap about a pack of them at Home Depot I don't remember what it was you get like four different you get four of these and there's like three different sizes so you get you know 16 12 whatever it is I don't remember different sizes but I use this because I figured this would this would paint it on there real nice and even so went ahead and did the uh, first coat now the instruction says to wait anywhere between four to six hours but uh, I tried that and I picked it up and when I touched it uh, I could still feel like it was a little bit sticky so I knew it wasn't completely dry so then from that point on any step that I did with a varnish or stain I waited 24 hours okay that's why it took so long to do this so what I did is I did one coat waited 24 hours put another coat on came back after the second coat and it was it still had this like dull color I said well, what the heck's going on this is supposed to have the two and one supposed to have the gloss well there was a step I forgot to do and what that step is is when you put a coat on what you're supposed to do is take like some steel wool I don't unfortunately it doesn't have my steel wool here but some real fine thin steel wool and you're supposed to take it and sand the entire uh, buttstock and all your wood once you do that you'll go ahead and take a, a nice clean cloth and what I did is I wetted it a little bit and I wiped up any particles dust that may be still on the wood after I sanded it then you'll take and you'll put your next coat on so this one is coat number uh, three by this time when I came back the next day I don't know something to do with that sanding with the steel wool boom it was shiny I'm like oh wow that's cool so I did that and then I said well wait a minute then I started thinking this is not just gonna be a piece of wood table or cabinet this is a gun and at least on the on the hand guards as you start firing you're gonna be creating heat okay and so I didn't want you know uh, with all that heat the finish to you know eventually start coming off or whatever so then I started doing some more research and uh, they there's one kind of stain that they make well not not no, I'm sorry not stain but clear uh, after you stain it that they make that you can put over it to protect it and it's called right here it's made by Rust-Oleum this is the only one I say it's called the uh, it's called uh, marine spar varnish and this stuff is made for like boats and stuff but what it's made for is for for elements conditions uh, weather changes uh, heat uh, this has a high heat so when you start uh, firing it it's going to still have that protective coating uh, on on the uh, hand guards so I put this on so I put uh, three coats on of this and I did the same process no four coats I'm sorry four coats I did four coats of this and like I said all I did is every time I did it uh, I used this put a very light coating on the on, on the uh, foam and I lightly did every single little piece um, waited 24 hours so and it repeated the process four times so now between putting the original stain and polyurethane which was three coats then another four of those there's a total of seven coats and obviously when you do this you're gonna to want to keep it in a well ventilated area uh, well now what I did was I did it in my garage but because I use my garage every day for coming in and out with my vehicle I didn't want no dust to get adhere to it so what I did is I kind of created a, a little uh, makeshift uh, shelter for it and so that it was completely surrounded with no elements of dust ever being able to get into it um, after doing all of that then the rifle was done and like I said that was what was it 
It took me about a week and a half um, to do it. And uh, I'm probably, now I've, now I've watched some of the videos, now I've seen some videos where some people have put, you know, five, six coats. Some, I think in one video I watched, a guy put seven coats of, uh, of uh, clear on it. So um, I may go ahead and do that later. But as of right now, it's got a total of uh, seven coats between the stain and the varnish. It's got three stain and, and uh, four varnish. And uh, I think it turned out pretty well. <coughs> and uh, so I'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and change the camera view, let you take a look at what, what it looks like, and then uh, let you see what the final product is, and then. We'll talk about what's going to be the next step. So let's uh, change the camera angle. Be right back. All right. So here she is. Um, this gun right now. If I was to uh, go into a um, a gun shop and see this, you know, it, it definitely would be an eye catcher. You know, I wouldn't think that this is just some plain old washer 1063. So we'll go ahead and let's uh, let's get a close up of what it, how it looks. Look how really nice. Like I said, that is seven uh, coats of uh, of it. Now it looks really nice. Uh, let's take a look at the butt stock. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's some small blemishes on it, but for the most part, it uh, there's no streaks. That's why I recommend using that little foam. Uh, brush instead of an actual brush okay so I mean for not looking on a video first before I did this I think this turned out really really well you know um, and like I said uh, I'll probably uh, maybe do some more coats later on down the road now obviously the next the next test to to see is to take this out and to shoot it to see how well it sh it holds up. This this coating is going to hold up to just using it. You know, obviously I try not to abuse my my handguns. You know, I understand that handguns are are excuse me not handguns excuse me my firearms in general. Um, I understand that weapons are used for what a tool. It's a tool for hunting and protection. But at the same time, um, these things, if you take care of firearms, um, they can be handed down from generation to generation. So I want to make sure that uh, this stays like this for forever, you know, long after I'm gone. So, but I want to see how well this, this finish holds up to everyday use of, you know, taking it out to the range, and, you know, not necessarily banging it or throwing it on the ground, but just, you know, putting it up, you know, as if this finish wasn't on there and I think that's what I'll probably do is later on do a video sometime after I've probably taken it out to the range another five six times and shot you know and on another thousand two thousand rounds and and see how it, how it looks and how it holds up um, but you know like I said the uh, it looks really really well you know with the polished bolt right here now uh, but this you know slick you know the, there's no rounds in it I just put it in there to look good. But you know, as slick as this action is now, I mean, that is just with the sweet action. Now it looks good. Um, now, the next thing I want to do eventually, now this is probably going to take a little bit of time, is I want to do the actual gun. You know, I want to do a Duracoat or Cerakote it or, or do something. I just don't want to put any kind of just black heat resistant paint on it. I'm going to do my research on that and I'm going to see what works best and uh, that'll probably be my next step. I mean there's really not much more I can do to it. I want to keep this original. Now I could, you know, this is not a project to, you know, put a bad, you know, badass scope and, uh, you know, better trigger and all that other stuff. That's not what this project's for. It's to take the original Wasser 10 and just improve it. And what I mean by that is just improve what you know like I said the bolt that was in there we, 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 we you know we did what we did chromed it out made it much smoother now we'd refinish the wood 
And so then what I'll do next is just I want to refinish the, uh, the gun itself. And that will be it. And then this gun will be done. Um, so I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty happy about it, the way it turned out. Uh, it was a long process. Uh, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a project. It, it's a love project, you know. So, um, let's go ahead and do a one more view of the gun. Here, let's go this way. And, uh, tell me what y'all think, you know. Put some comments down there. Tell me what you guys think about it, you know, on how it turned out. Uh, I think, you know, for never doing this before, uh, first time uh, I thought it turned out pretty darn good you know I wasn't too far off as far as the steps that other people did uh, that had done this uh, you could take you could do videos and take a look at other people that have done this so like I said except for you know maybe not doing the acetone uh, to get grease and stuff off or whatever uh, pretty much everything I did on my own was was what other people did when they did theirs you know so uh it's it's pretty good you know it's pretty close to what other people did so i'm pretty excited about it oops sorry folks i'm just trying to adjust this camera real quick we'll go ahead and do some closing uh comments on here but uh you know it's it's awesome i i, I uh i enjoy it i can't wait to take it out and shoot it and like i said i will de definitely do an update video once i've put down another you know thousand rounds into it and let you see what the finish now I want to do like I said I wanted to go ahead and put some more uh, probably coats on here but what I won't do is I'll wait until after I shoot those thousand plus rounds through it uh, and then so I can show you a true uh, review of what how the uh, how it's held up without doing anything more to it uh, but uh, you know it's it's awesome like I said I'm sorry that the videos uh, the last video is, was screwed up, and it's been a long time between that video and this video. Uh, it's just uh, because, like I said, I, if you watch the last one, I got, I'm going to school, so that takes up a lot of my time and then my everyday life. So, you know, it's trying hard to find time most of the time. So, you know, I do, I'm not a person that gets paid to do videos. I don't have, a, you know, 10 million subscribers. So I do this uh, on my own time because I love it. Uh, and I hope that you guys love it, you know, that's the whole reason for me to do this so that hopefully that you guys love it um, If you guys uh, like this video, you know, tell your friends about it, you know, I mean, I'm not a professional There's way more obviously professional uh, Gun channels out there that I love to watch uh, Mine's I don't profess to be a professional gun person I'm just an everyday Joe that likes to just do videos about guns and reviews and so on and so forth That's you know what I do but if you like it, tell your friends, you know, because if you watched the last video or if you watched the other couple of videos, I, I encourage you to watch some of the other videos. They're pretty cool. You know, the big AR shoot video is good. Uh, the video about, you know, uh, the uh, technical aspects of all those ARs, that's a good video. You know, some of my, of my earlier, obviously, videos with the audio gun range videos. You know, when I do my videos, like I said, they are uh, they're straight from the hip. You know, I don't, obviously I don't do no editing or nothing, you know, so the, you know, if there's failures with magazines or ammo uh, or the gun itself, whatever it may be, when I, when it happens, it happens. I don't edit it out. It is what it is. And that's, that's what I kind of like, you know, when I do these. But uh, if you watch the one video where I talked about, uh, my next epic thing that I will do uh, will be, we're going to take a bunch of Tannerite and we're going to put it in something old, maybe an old car, an old washing machine or something. We're going to take it out somewhere and we'll blow it up, you know, using probably, you know, a 338 Lapua or, you know, something really big. And, uh, but in order for that to happen, I have to hit 500 subscribers. So if you like it and you want to see that, tell your friends, man, tell them to subscribe, throw me some likes, uh, I've been getting a lot of comments on some of the stuff. Uh, I just want to close this out. I don't want to make it too freaking long. Uh, I've been getting a lot of weird comments on uh, one video in particular, and that is my uh, Ultimate Ammo video. I think it's a cool video. If you haven't seen it, check that out if you like ammo. I think it's pretty cool. I've been getting comments from people who are, I, I don't know if they're hating or what, but they talk about, you know, anything from, uh, you know, this guy is just like a mama's boy. He doesn't have, he's not married. He's not this. He's like that. I'm like, 
really does it matter? You know, I, so I don't really worry about those video, uh, those comments, due to the fact that you know that video is in, is intended for true gun enthusiasts like me, who just want to be able to see some really cool ammo collections. So I don't worry about them. But come on, people, you know, trollers, people that just have nothing better to do. Come on, you know, if you got if you, if you got nothing good to say about something like that, you know, y'all just you know go to another channel. But uh, I love, I love it. I love what you guys uh, make comments, help me out, you know, so I can do my videos better in the future. So until next time, I'm not sure what we'll do, but we got some more videos. I've got a video I'm wanting to do. I'm just not for sure what it's, uh, how I'm going to do it, but uh, it's going to be pretty cool. I've just got to figure out how I'm going to do it uh, because of where I live. Uh, I don't want to get the police to come out, so. Uh, I, whenever I figure it out, pro I promise you it's going to be cool when I do it. Uh, you'll like it. So uh, until next time, thank you guys, man. I appreciate uh, all the likes and the subscribers. Like I said, tell your friends. Uh, the more subscribers we get, the faster we get to 500, the quicker it is and we get to blow something up. So until next time, YouTube, peace.